During Thanksgiving vacation nearly 20 years ago, I sat behind my cousin with a couple family members as we watched him try and miserably fail to beat a mission in Command and Conquer. Watching that, and then playing games such as Command and Conquer Tiberian Sun, or Praetorians, and later Warcraft 3, or the copies of Starcraft and Starcraft Brood War that my family got for me, kind of cemented inside of me the conventions of the real-time strategy genre. Much how, in the last 10 or 20 years, the first-person shooter mechanics have kind of become ingrained into the muscle memory and the gaming experience library of many people who play video games broadly. I kind of grew up with this understanding of the real-time strategy genre at conventions. I wasn't any good, in fact, I still wouldn't claim that I am, but I didn't feel hopelessly lost by the command and control library, the mythos, that surrounds the real-time strategy genre. However, it's 2021, and there's not really a place to go back to to learn those conventions anymore, short of playing games that are 5 or 10 or 20 years old. This isn't the early 90s, and it's not the early 2000s. Gaming doesn't have the real-time strategy genre firmly enmeshed in it the way that it used to. And so while I, for instance, am terrible at first-person shooters because I missed that those decades during my time playing other games, so too many people have missed the basic controls and genres and just the mechanical feeling of real-time strategy games as an entire genre. And so if you are one of those people, you may be feeling stuck. For even if you do play the campaign, these campaigns, whether intuitively or on purpose or by design or by accident, do ask that you have a certain level of skill and aptitude, which is much higher than the floor of zero that you may be approaching the game from. And it is in this background that I am pleased to say there is a solution that caters not only to those specific individuals from lifting them from ground zero of the real-time strategy floor of experience, but it's also enjoyable in its own right, and that is Campaign Act 1 by Derpo. Campaign Act 1 by Derpo is played out in six missions, each of which are maybe six to ten minutes each in length at most, and it follows a very modest story. You are the soldier knight, Sir Edward, and you are traveling from your realm of kind Cardine with the purpose of finding the missing priest brother William. As you find the priest brother William, he unfolds more of the plot, not to a world-ending or world-shaking degree, but in a way that I like, very modest, small aims plot that nevertheless concludes satisfactorily. At the beginning of this campaign, you are taught the very basics of unit control. You are not expected to build a base. There are not resources for you to manage other than your control of specific units. You have a very clear objective. Get to the end and find Brother William. You have very simple failure conditions, and the game immediately tells you if you have failed. Namely, if Sir Edward dies, the mission is a failure. And because the missions are so short, each of them, you can quickly go back and load back in these campaign missions and start from zero in the campaign without feeling like you were asked to invest 20 or 30 minutes. Most people who are familiar with real-time strategy games may not realize that this is a substantial investment for most people. Most missions that can be beaten by speedrunners or even, we would say, above-averagely skilled players, but averagely skilled ranked players, most campaign missions can be beaten in a matter of minutes, but this is not the case for the people that mostly have the campaign catered to their skill level. However, that is where Derpo's campaign shines. By splitting the campaign over six missions, making the failure requirements explicit, having the game ending immediately when there is failure, and immediately telling you when the game is successful, you get a nice dash of flavor and story, while at the same time getting gameplay that feeds back into a gameplay loop. One of the other benefits to Derpa's Campaign Act 1 is that although it is split over six missions, and although the missions slowly increase in scale, they also very, very tentatively, but noticeably, increase the skills that they ask of the other player. This is not to the charting extent that you may experience in other real-time strategy games, where mission one may involve a small amount of unit control, mission two involves building a small base, and every subsequent mission involves more and more complex enemies with more and more enemy types and forces to array yourself against, while you simultaneously have to build more, not even counting the other requirements. 
Uh, for instance, I've recently played the Warcraft 3 campaign, and while it's extremely enjoyable, you go from controlling a hero unit in the first couple of missions to having to navigate an assault on multiple bases by the end of the first campaign. And this may be a bridge too far for those of you who need just a basic convention, like understanding of real-time strategy conventions, and to have a good time while you're doing it without having put in 30 minutes or 60 minutes or 120 minutes into the mere effort of saving and loading and trying again. And so for that, I have to commend Durpo's campaign. It has a small story, it's modest and unassuming, but it gets the job done. It starts you with having control of a few units, and the end of the campaign involves you mostly controlling units with just a dash of base management and resource gathering. You won't be able to play the complete game in a ranked multiplayer sense. Heck, the end of the campaign might even involve you moving on to another slightly more complex campaign just to get more of a feeling for the other units and interactions in the game, but it does an excellent job of picking you up from nothing and giving you something in a way that's enjoyable. So if you haven't already, try Durbo's campaign. You can look for it by going to the play button and typing in campaign space act one. Again, that's campaign space act one. There are secrets to enjoy, interactions to enjoy, Easter eggs, and just the game is rewarding to play if you are more experienced. It's beautiful to look at. You clearly put tons of effort into making the map appealing visually for people. And there are doodads every which way, so that if you feel like you're lost or you don't know what to do, don't worry. Durbo has you covered.